Good evening, everyone. Glad everyone could make it today. Uh, this is, I think, will be the last of our essay series for webinars and kind of giving students a sneak peek of topics to come. Hopefully you've started already. Hopefully you're finding time to chip away uh, at your essays. If not, you know, and you're watching this in the fall, you know, good luck to you as well. <laughs> but definitely we'll go through a little bit of our about supplemental essays today. We've done kind of chunks of each. We've done UCs, we've done Common App, we did a session to kind of review uh, kind of how to edit an essay. And then this is kind of the last big group of college essays you have of, you know, some schools that'll just ask some extra questions. And, you know, even though these are supplements, even though these are additional, does not mean they're less important or anything like that. So definitely want to make sure we can cover it today. Um, I have Alyssa and Lindsay joining me today. Alyssa, can you introduce yourself and then Lindsay? Yeah, hi. hi. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. My name is Alyssa. Um, I've been with Illumin. This is my second season now. So I was an English teacher, really loved that. But now I am a tech recruiter. So I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of writing essays, but also the STEM world, if you are interested in that at all. And hi, um, I'm Lindsay. I'm an essay specialist with Illumin, uh, and I teach writing in Los Angeles. Just to keep brief. <laughs> and of course, if you have, if you've been to a webinar, you know you can use chat, you can use Q and A. Um, definitely feel free to put your questions there. We'll definitely get to them at the end. If there's a place where I can interject, I'll try as well. Um, but with that, I'll pass it to Melissa and Lindsay. Hi, uh, so I'm going to give you an overview of our agenda for today. For most of the slides, we'll be adding some of our own experience as essay specialists um, and telling you a little bit about uh, the sort of thing that we do in Illumin. But for uh, to get us started, I'm just going to go over the basics, which is that we'll cover what are supplemental essays, how important they are, which schools require them, are optional supplemental essays really optional, what should I write about, common types of prompts, and also sample essays. So things that you need to keep in mind about supplemental essays are which schools are requiring a common app versus a PIQ. So although these are gonna be specific to each university, they are gonna feature similar themes. So planning your essays ahead is gonna be really important for you to be able to recycle your own ideas. So for example, you might wanna take ideas from your UC PIQs or Common App and recycle them for the supplemental essays, but it is a good idea to have those things mapped out so you're not being too repetitive of your ideas. So if a school requires a Common App and two supplemental essays, maybe you take some ideas from your UC PIQs for the supplemental essays. Um, it's not that once you've said something once, you can never say it again, but we don't wanna repeat exactly the same idea. So just something to keep in mind, some planning ahead of time could certainly help out with that. Um, you really wanna emphasize who you are. And once you've written something anywhere, it's gonna to belong to the library of who you are as a person for the purposes of any personal statement that you're making. So, you know, keep in mind the word limits. If they are short, they are gonna probably read a little bit more directly like a UCPIQ. So just something to consider there with tone and things like that. And so I'm sure you're wondering how important are these? And the answer is very important. Um, they give the reader a broader context for who you are, what's important to you, what you've accomplished, and most importantly, why you're a good fit for the school. And that can't be emphasized enough. Um, it really is about fit. Uh, and that means understanding the school and what the school has to offer and how you'd best make use of those resources and be an active part of the community as a student and as a person. Um, this is another extension of the personal statement. So it is very personal and very much focused on your response to the school and how you would fit with the school. Um, so that means that part of this is really researching what the schools you're applying to are about and how you would be a good fit there. Um, it's an opportunity to educate yourself and get excited for potentially going to that school um, and why us is part of the umbrella of uh, why you're a good fit for this school. Um, 
So one example would be we once had a student who um, was applying to Cornell and had not done research and thought that because it was in New York, it was very close to New York City. Uh, he'd also only spent time in New England during the summer. And so he, he talked a little bit about to us before writing um, about how he wanted to be part of the warm climate there. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, since Cornell actually gets quite cold in the winter and it is not close to New York City, really knowing the school that you're applying to and how you would be a good fit there is really important. Luckily, we spoke to him before he got very far in writing and um, it turned out all right. But that's the sort of thing that, you know, the more research you do in advance to really understand things, the stronger you'll be. Yeah, and just to add to that, so um, it's also an opportunity for you to give insight into why you've chosen what you've chosen. So, for example, with a Y major, you can talk about why you've chosen therapeutic recreation. Maybe that's because you have a family member who you're really close to has some sort of a disability or something, and you really want to highlight that. So it's an opportunity for them to just get to know you a little bit more as well. Here's some of the schools that might include supplemental essays. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. You should certainly do your own research and get organized with which schools are requiring that supplemental essay beforehand. And so what about the optional essays? Um, they are optional, but if you can write one, do it because that shows that you're putting effort into your application. Um, but if it's optional and it just doesn't apply to you, don't force it. Um, you don't have to write it. Again, this is part of this is an extension of the personal statement. So it is going to be a personal choice whether you write that optional essay, those optional essays or not. I'll add one quick thing since the past couple uh, years of admissions, there had some schools have added an optional COVID essay. And it's just if you wanted to add any additional context, you could. We'll see if that still continues for these next few years. Some schools may have it, some schools may not, but by no means do you need to write about your COVID experience for that particular you know, school if they ask. So these are the common types of prompts you're gonna see, the why us, the why major, an activity and a short. Um, these shorts can sometimes be very short, even just like a list. So write down a list of adjectives that you think describe you. I've seen that on occasion. Um, but, you know, you need to keep in mind with all of these types of prompts, there's going to be a subtext of not only is this university a fit for you, but are you a fit for the university? It should be a unanimous match. So take advantage of the opportunity to make your responses very specific to the university. You can also think about, you know, what does that school have to offer? How is that going to benefit you? The University of Iowa has a great writing program. Is that something that you're interested in? Take that opportunity to put yourself and your interests into it as well. Yeah, and um, once again, your research really comes into play here and understanding how you align with the resources of the university. Um, so even at, you know, a, a mid size or larger university, there are sometimes uh, opportunities to either in seminars or sort of assemblies or at Yale, the master's T's interact with speakers on a, um, a, a more intimate level and more direct level. Um, so really finding out what uh, what sort of opportunities there are to uh, interact with guest lecturers, who the professors are. Um, the different scholarships available, study abroad programs, all of these sort of things like really help with the um, the why us and also you can connect to your major to activities. Um, the shorts tend to be more specific, but um, you know your research really, really helps. So here are three different prompts that you might see for three different schools. I just want to read over these because I want to talk about how they're kind of the same but also different. So the first one, describe the unique qualities that attract you to the specific undergraduate college or school to which you are applying at the University of Michigan. How would that curriculum support your interests? 
help us understand how you might engage specific resources, opportunities, and or communities here. We are curious about what these specifics are as well as how they may enrich your time at Northwestern and beyond. And lastly, why are you interested in attending Columbia University? We encourage you to consider the aspects that you find unique and compelling about Columbia. So you notice that the word specific is repeated there. But basically what all of these prompts are asking you, they're saying we have unique qualities, we have unique curriculum, opportunities, communities. They want you to dig in and find those unique details and talk about them in that essay to talk about why the school would be a good fit for you. So things for you to consider, have you visited campus? Do you have family members who have gone there? Research courses, professors, is there anything about your identity that you might wanna explore on campus? Um, so. Those are just some things to think about with that. Yeah, and as Alyssa just mentioned, different aspects of identity, of cultural interests, um, and how it, understanding what that resource, like the scope of that resource, is that something that could affect you even if it's outside of your personal identity and your personal culture? Are you interested in other resources? Like uh, Yale has a huge center for Jewish life called Slifka that a lot of people gather on Friday nights to eat and there's different cultural um, speakers that come through. Um, there are also a lot of international opportunities that places have. The University of Iowa has an Irish writing program um, and the writer's workshop. So really knowing what the school is really proud of and if that aligns with your interests at all um, can really help. So tackling the YS prompts, um, specific, specific, specifics. We've said it a lot, um, specifics and research, doing your research on the school to show your authentic interest, um, understanding how your experiences have led you to want to attend this school, really clarifying that, stating your goals and how the school's resources will support them and showing that you and the school are a uniquely beautiful match. Um, this is really an opportunity to um, let that research shine and to show how it connects with you personally. Uh, some things that you can do are find out specifics about courses, find out specifics about professors' names. Maybe you're interested in civil engineering and your university has historic buildings that are really uh, beautiful. Um, find out about those and take any interesting information uh, any interesting nugget of information and this is your time to share it so if you had a great tour on campus and there were a few details that really stood out to you um, you can mention how uh, those things like spark your intellectual creativity and and will affect how you are a student and community member there um, yeah there's just so many ways to let your research shine through at a quick example of a YS. Okay, so I'm just going to read this to give you some audio uh, to deepen the experience that you have enjoying this on the screen. Um, community is central to Rice, as demonstrated through its residential college system. Beyond friendly Jack competitions, Rice also fosters a school-wide community through its culture of care. Rice's small classes would make seeking help from professors and connecting with classmates easy. Through Professor Shri Srivastava's large-scale machine learning class, I'd learned from robotics and healthcare-related data sets. As Rice provides its students with ample opportunities, I hope to research alongside Professor Srivastava on scalable and sustainable deep learning. Located in the heart of Houston, and this student correctly knows where the college is located, Rice would allow me to pursue experiential learning. Through the D2K lab, I'd take advantage of Rice's proximity to the Texas Children's Hospital. More specifically, I hope to develop a machine learning algorithm to detect impending cardiac arrests in babies. While Rice would provide me with small communities, its emphasis on experiential learning would simultaneously prepare me to go out and make a difference in the real world. So we do want to talk about this here for a second. Um, Anthony, can I ask you to go to slide 12 just so that we can get a visual for what we'll be talking about? Sure. So 
When we tackle these prompts, what you need to consider for your own is, are the student and the college a good match? How is that gonna be shown? How is this student going to use college resources to meet their long and short-term goals? What are the strengths and weaknesses and what data points can you see that the student researched? So going back to the response now, I think that one of the stronger points of this response, this student is in on the, ling the lingo. I didn't go to rice. I have no idea what a Jack competition is, but I'm sure that someone who is very familiar with rice would know what that is. So they've already looked into that. They've already made it a point of interest. It's also doing a nice job referencing this very specific professor that they admire, researching the location on and an emphasis on an atypical form of learning. The fact that the student is interested in this experiential learning just shows their intellectual curiosity and the fact that a unique learning method that Rice has is going to work for this student. Um, I think this example also really puts the specifics of the student in there. We get a clear sense of their goals, their priorities. The student wants a small supportive community and I think that comes through in their response. They do you know, reference community many times but it, doesn't feel too repetitive. It just feels really central to their identity. And it's something that's important to the student. So a strong mention of communities and that experiential learning are important factors in choosing a college for this student. And it gives you a strong glimpse about what this student might do to to engage on campus as a student and a community member. We know that they're interested in medicine. They're interested in maybe doing some research um, involving babies. So all in all, Lindsay and I did think that this was a pretty strong response, but we'd always be happy to hear any questions or feedback that you have on it as well. I'll add one quick comment is just also like if you look at the S the essay itself, it's like 10 sentences, but it's so dense. It just includes so much information of like, yeah, of alluding to, you know, the, the culture of rice or kind of traditions, uh, the specific labs, professors, uh, courses, you know, uh, proximity to places or partnership with places like the, like all of being able to show and demonstrate all that knowledge is uh, you know what they're looking for when they are looking at essays like this. I think this is a great template really for your writing to reference. I, I think it's a very strong answer. Yeah. Um. So we're going to go through a few examples of why major prompts. Uh, students at Yale have plenty of time to explore their academic interests before committing to one or more major fields of study. As of this moment, what academic areas seem to fit your interests or goals most comfortably? Why do these areas appeal to you? It's a little bit long winded, but that is the why do you want to major in what you want to major in, even um, though this uh, celebrates the um, diversity of learning within a liberal arts education, you know, it is targeted on your interests and goals and your major. Um, another way to phrase it is from University of Pennsylvania. How did you discover your intellectual and academic interests and how will you explore them at the University of Pennsylvania? Please respond considering the specific undergraduate school you've selected. Uh, and then Purdue says, briefly discuss your reasons for pursuing the major you've selected. Purdue is very straight to the point. Um, and you can see little clues about the schools in these different ways of asking why this major. Yale very much emphasizes, oh, there's plenty of time to change your major. You can explore a lot of things outside of your major, but what in general, what are you working towards? Purdue just says straight away, what, um, what are your reasons for pursuing your major? Um, so you can learn different things about the schools in the ways um, that they phrase their questions as well. So when tackling a why major prompt, you really want to clearly state your intended major. We'll go into an example later, but saying that you want to go into something like mathematics might not be specific enough unless you specifically state that you want to be a mathematics major, because you can go into machine learning or engineering or, you know, other things that are STEM related with a math major as well. So 
You also want to show your reader the journey of you becoming passionate about the subject, give them some insight into who you are as a person and what's important to you, and then brainstorm key moments and experiences about what you learned. This is a good exercise to do before you start writing, um, and if you're even feeling stuck in the middle of writing any of these responses. So you can share moments from when you were young, but I think the focus should be when you're in high school, some more recent events. Um, state what you hope to accomplish in the future and how are your studies in this major going to help you accomplish that. So just really think about the fact that no one's going to want to guess your major at the end of the response. Being clear is very important. You can maybe outline your, traje your trajectory into your chosen field of study. Um, it can be a delicate balance sometimes, especially if you only have 250 words. You don't want 200 to be about your past and then 50 words about why that major is important to you. You wanna be able to balance it out really well. I'm sure that a lot of you have heard the phrase, it's important to show and not tell. And in a lot of these responses, it is going to be important to tell and not show because you wanna make sure that you're getting their question answered and that you're also stating who you are in a very concise way. And don't worry if you don't yet have a major that you're 100% sure about. Um, in tackling the why major prompts, if you're, if you're applying undeclared, you should choose one or two key academic focuses that you're passionate about and follow the same guidelines. So this is an opportunity for you to target a few of the things that you are um, interested in or a potential major. Uh, you can even just, you know, profile one potential major and, you know, you've made it clear that you're not 100% about it and they understand that every school understands that coming in, you know, you could be a math major and then take a French literature course that just blows your mind and go and get a scholarship and study overseas and dig deep into that. Or you could start off in the humanities and go into STEM. College is a time for exploration and this question is meant with that it's just meant to show your thought process and show some of your uh, intellectual vibrancy focused through the framework of a potential major one more example all right so i'll go ahead and read this one for carnegie mellon I consider joining my middle school's math counts team a turning point in my mathematics journey. Up until joining, I was accustomed to math classes that spoon fed theorems for memorization. So I was thoroughly unprepared for the high schoolers constantly prompting, why does this solution work? And what is another approach? I loved that they challenged us to really understand the concepts. And I often spent hours after meetings discussing solutions with my brother. While math counts ended in middle school, my math competition career did not. As an underclassman, I thoroughly studied algebra, geometry, and more exotic topics like number theory and combinatrics to prepare for contests like the American Mathematics Competition Series or team-based competitions like the Berkeley Math Tournament. I solidified my foundations in math through a fast-paced contest style. Joining Math Counts forever changed my relationship with mathematics, even outside the contest realm. I enjoyed Euler's circle for higher math where every problem required a proof to justify the answer. Through proof writing, I grew to love the strong logic behind the intrinsic properties of math. Whether I am lecturing generating functions at math club or tutoring pre-calculus to middle schoolers, I apply my knowledge of proof writing to, to justify the buildup of mathematical reasoning. My passion for math led me to the program in mathematics for young scientists, where I became confident that I wanted to continue pursuing mathematics in college. My experiences at the Math Counts Club will forever resonate with me, giving me an appreciation for the strong logic that holds the intrinsic properties of mathematics together. This appreciation motivates me to further explore higher mathematics and its applications in related fields like computational linguistics and machine learning, where mathematics is core to um, model optimization. Sorry, I just had a pop up right there. So if we can go to the next slide again, just really quickly to talk about what we will talk about for this one. Um, we want to think about whether the student clearly stated their intended major, how they showed their experiences that strengthened their passion or abilities. Did this student look to the future of their studies and goals? And then what are the strengths and weaknesses? So again, a good framework through which to view your own essay um, when you end up writing that. 
So our, my first thought is that the intended major is not super clear. They could say that they're interested in being a math major and, and exploring math topics within mathematics like computational linguistics and machine learning, but math is also so broad. Do you wanna do math? Do you wanna do engineering? Do you wanna do data science? What specifically is your end goal with that? Yeah, I, I agree that the, the actual major is not clear whether they want to focus on math itself or applying math to another field. I mean, this is a beautifully written response um, and you can definitely see the intellectual curiosity. This feels more like a, an actual personal uh, statement than it does like a supplemental essay. Um, and this person loves questioning and learning and that's very exciting. Um, but the first, they spend a lot of time talking about something that happened in middle school. And um, it's a missed opportunity to um, further elaborate on, um, on their other experiences that are more recent. I also feel like the student doesn't talk a whole lot about the future state. They do broadly speak about the possibilities, but it's not very specific to those personal goals or even those professional goals down the line. So really consider what do you want? Um, do you want to use proofs to communicate with, you know, maybe other life forms? Do you want to use proofs to predict changes in weather patterns? Whatever fun thing you want to do with your major, the why major is a really good place to talk about that and give some insight into your personality. Yeah, and just once again, there's great bones to this, but it needs a little bit more focus and specificity in terms of responding fully to the question of why major. Um, the, the genuineness, the sincerity of it is really admirable. It just needed a little bit more um, tightening and a, a refocus really on that why major, why now, and, and a sense, conveying a sense to the school of what kind of student they will be now in, within their major. So a few final tips that we have, if we didn't emphasize this enough, do your research. Um, be creative with your research. Maybe you wanna reach out to some alums or professors, you know, get some firsthand accounts about the school and make sure that it's a right fit for you. This is something that should be fun for you. You know, is this something that you really want? Do you see yourself at this school? Are you stressed out because you think you wanna to apply to like 25 to 30 colleges? Maybe you can use these prompts as a chance to narrow down that list and figure out whether or not it's a place you can really see yourself. talk a little bit here again of thinking about if you're working interested in working with us you can definitely uh sign up for our, our package of, uh to work with an essay specialist it would be you know Lindsay, Alyssa. i'm assuming if you're going to sign up through today um, you can use code start s-t-a-r-t uh, for 20 percent off for this next week uh, i also want to point out that we're going to have a, a write workshop so a, a workshop saturday at 1 p.m covering specifically the supplemental essays so if you're also hoping to get a head start or to get a get an initial uh, idea of how that might work, um, you can definitely sign up for us with us there. Uh, I'll put the uh, what's it called the info and the uh, link in the chat in a little bit so that you can take a look there as well. And I just want to piggyback on that and say that uh, the boot camp curriculum and so many of the things that Lumen does provides a lot of pre writing opportunities um, and a lot of ways to really target your writing um, dig deep and give yourself a really strong base of. Um, of self understanding to apply to these questions, a lot of the the short answers and um, many of the essay uh, questions themselves, both supplemental elements of the common app and and other um, parts of the application you'll find yourself really answering in the pre writing. Um, and the materials are just wonderful and there's even an animation uh, as an animation series that is really, really wonderful really helpful. Um, so I highly recommend the materials in addition to the joys of working with us and um, and helping to shape these together. We'll do questions 
And so far we've been so thorough that have been no questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely, yeah, if you have any questions, if we want to go back and look at a specific example, or if there's a prompt that was unclear, let us know. We do have a little bit of a smaller group today, so do not be afraid in being vocal. We're happy to kind of go through some other topics as well. Um, if, you, if students have run into a strange supplement so far or something that they really want to cover, uh, I'm sure we can also just get some opinions out there on like how to start these, you know, really odd supplements as well. So. Yes, yeah, maybe I, I'll just pose this to Lindsay and Alyssa. When you're helping students kind of with so many different supplements, are there particular ones you like starting with? Are there ones that you think some students find easier compared to others? I think there's an overlap in um, in questions like why us and why made why your specific major, even though they seem like very different questions. Once you have that base of really understanding sort of your um, your values and your core interests as a student, you can see how that applies to the resources that the college has to offer. So the more you really dive into depth in one area, the more you'll find yourself informing on other um, other questions as well. So it's really it's kind of fun when you start this process. And that's part of the reason I love the pre writing materials so much. They're all very interconnected. Uh, yeah, I got a request to go back to the uh, why, why apply for this school or why us? This particular slide, right? So yeah, yeah, I think why us is also the first one is much harder compared to the other ones that you'll do, right? Because a lot of schools may ask this why us question. Um, and I think also like researching schools is very confusing to a lot of students in the beginning of like, hey, I want to study biology, but like, you know, how am I supposed to figure out exactly what part of biology or what the school has to offer? Or, you know, sometimes students, I feel like they limit themselves to just the major and then don't realize, oh, I should dig into the elective courses available at that college or the labs available like the type of funding that they get for research or you know the reputation or like what's well known for the schools perfect the question is what's the best way to research schools awesome <laughs> but there's so, more. Oh. yeah go ahead Lindsay. Oh, I just got excited because one of the, the most fun ways to research is to find a, a current student and really ask them what what are they excited about at, uh, at their school and then going through, of course, the website of the school, uh, going through looking, having a glance at the course catalog, um, the, the different extracurricular um, options, um, but definitely don't be afraid to talk to people who are current students or recent graduates and find out what it really is that you're getting into. Yeah, and just to piggyback off that, so I just did a quick search myself just to see what would come up. I literally typed into Google biology, comma, Carnegie Mellon, comma, professors. That really quickly took me to their faculty site, found a man named Drew Bridges, Drew Bridges Biological Sciences. He has this whole profile with his education, the research that he does, the publications that he's been a part of. So that's just a super easy way to even see like, okay, what kind of research does this professor do? Is that something that speaks out to me? Um, with the publications, maybe you read one, maybe it really speaks to you and you can talk about your why school um, by referencing that publication. So I was just thinking biology because um, I heard that mentioned, but you can do this with anything, you know, with English, with journalism, with math, with civil engineering. So, you know, quick Google search will really do a lot for you. I also wanna add, do not discount campus traditions because I think, was that in the rice? Yeah, of, again, like this, these schools are, you know, if you're gonna be involved in the community for four years and you're gonna be someone that's gonna be 
uh, on campus excited to go to these schools like there are these traditions that a lot of campuses will participate in or students will participate in right maybe it's the you know for a lot of these larger public schools maybe it's the football game and a certain rivalry that students are really involved in maybe there's something more niche in these smaller schools like when I went to CMU there's a spring carnival every year that's basically like the one time uh, all the students get to go and have a break and you know have some fun uh, over a long weekend right so being able to kind of speak to that as well can still be really helpful. Question of, is there anything to avoid when writing supplemental essays? And maybe another way to phrase this is also like, are there certain traps that you find like students fall into when they start writing or start trying to work on a draft? Definitely not enough research. I mean, I, I think it, it just, I know we've emphasized it, but it can't be emphasized enough, like really research and, and follow through if you can. If, if you do the kind of research that Alyssa just dove into, then go that extra step and see if you can contact that professor, if you can get a message from them, if you can ask them just a little bit, uh, you know, just any, just a small, tiny way of, of reaching out. Um, that doesn't, that won't come up in your application, but it'll inform your application by making it more sincere and, and um, you know, checking and making sure that that uh, professor is accessible to undergraduates. Um, just really uh, following through a little bit and digging a little bit deeper, I think, is really helpful. Yeah, avoid being too surface level. Um, a why us, it could be tempting to talk about why you want to go to a school in Florida, because maybe you like the beach and the warm weather but definitely avoid focusing an entire essay on your love of the beach and warm weather. You want it to be a deeper insight into you as a person and your motivators. Now, if you wanna to go to a school in Florida because you wanna study marine biology and you need the beach and warm weather for that, that's a little bit different, but you always wanna go a couple of layers deeper. Yeah. That's very fair. I think if you're starting the essay about the location the college is in, you tend to veer off into that path of, you know, Cornell's in New York City. So uh, uh, another, I mean, I, I guess another, I'll, I'll add another example of this question because I think with why us, why major, it might be a little bit easier. What about these really, you know, odd supplements of like, you know, Stanford has like write a letter to your roommate, University of Chicago is notorious for having just like funky prompts, like find X or something like that. Um, I've heard Caltech does uh, like, tell me something unethical you've done. Do you have any advice on how to start with when, you, when you're thrown a curveball like that? To be honest, I've always been a really big fan of stream of consciousness type writing. I think that you don't know what's going to come out of your brain when you just continually sleep, continually write and don't stop. So if there is a really strange question, like what is something ethically bad that you have done you know you might be taken aback but then you can start thinking like when I was a kid I took away my friend's toy in the sandbox whatever and that starts spiraling and you just keep on writing and writing and writing and then at the end of that five minutes literally set a timer for yourself and even if during that stream of consciousness you're saying like I don't know what I'm writing about right now but let me try to figure it out and you're writing down every single thought it's just a really organic way of getting I guess those parts of your brain fired up that are making those connections and then writing them all down. So I think that that's a really good way to come up with ideas when you're stumped. I think it's kind of a personal thing. It's helped me out a lot, but if it's something that you haven't tried, what better time to try than now? I could not agree more. I think that's such fabulous advice. Um, I teach creative writing and exactly that, um, that sort of thing. And it's amazing the connections that your brain will make when you relax a little and you let it and you have that force of momentum kind of going through you, things will just come up. And then uh, the process of, of editing is something that Illumin specialists, we spend so much time doing. So if you come to us and you have, you've edited and you've done what you can, but you still feel like, oh, this came out of a stream of consciousness. Um, maybe I should have been much more careful and whatever. It's much better to come with too many thoughts that too many good thoughts than 
something that is really strained and really trying when you loosen yourself up to the momentum so much good stuff can come out especially with those unusual prompts and i think another way to think about it is like don't let it ruminate in your head and keep thinking and thinking of like oh i need to get the perfect example or something like that if you find yourself doing that put it on the paper and you'll realize like uh, this one's interesting. This one doesn't quite work. You know, yeah, that's that's part of that exercise of that stream of consciousness that you're able to truly consider everything that's on that paper rather than just have it stuck in your head and you just never go anywhere or you just feel like you never go anywhere. In the, the process of uh, improvisation and acting famously has the phrase, yes, and. So embracing um, different ideas and allowing those to kind of spring into new ideas at the initial stages of writing and in response to strange prompts is just, it's the way, I mean, it's a very strong approach to take. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? I guess this is the last call. <laughs> Otherwise, Lindsay, Alyssa, and I are all going to log off a little early. Yeah, as a reminder again, supplemental essay right over the weekend, Saturday, 1 p.m. Uh, the link is in the chat if you want to go find that. Um, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa will be, if you want, yeah, if you want another exclusive webinar, yeah, uh, kind of like being able to dive deeper, uh, we'll be there to, you know, present that as well. So. Okay, perfect. In that case, again, I appreciate everyone joining us. We're going to take a short break from webinars for a little bit. We'll probably restart uh, come, you know, middle of August, something like that. Um, and yeah, everybody take care. Have a good rest of your night. Bye. Bye. Bye.